This week, I'm in the Holy City, Charleston, South Carolina. If I sweat, can I have it free? Five restaurants are competing for my million dollar review. It's not classy, is it? It's not subtle. Posh or not, they're all contenders. Possibly the ugliest restaurant I've ever been in, but only one can win. It's terrible. Who will get it? I cannot eat with this going on. The whole menu is lies. And who won't? Quite difficult thing to eat with chopsticks. No one gets one over on the Million Dollar Critic. Wow, I can see why you have a door on the kitchen. I'm Giles Corrin. As restaurant critic for the London Times, I've become the most powerful critic in Europe. Restaurant owners fear me because a bad review from me could shut them down. But a good one could bump up their profits by a million dollars. With my researcher, Julia, I'm in North America looking for restaurants worthy of my review, which could change their business and lives forever. This week, I'm in the Old South, Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston is a pleasure seeker's wonderland. It's got beautiful architecture, picturesque beaches, perfect weather, and culinary superstars. If I could, I'd review every restaurant in town. But I'm only here for a few days, so I want to find one place in Charleston worthy of my million dollar review. So what exactly am I looking for? Most boring, pompous food critics will tell you that there are three things that matter. Food, atmosphere, and service. But my readers deserve much more than that. I'm looking for an exceptional eating experience, and I don't care if it's the most expensive restaurant in town, or a hole in the wall serving up one incredible dish. But I can't eat everywhere. So my researcher, Julia, has narrowed down the city's food scene to five restaurants that are doing amazing things. Then I decide which one deserves my million dollar review. It's very exciting to be in Charleston. I mean, they, if you look around you, they've got, they've got class, history, money, style, taste. I want to be part of this, Julia. I want to do southern things. Southern things? Yeah, I, want, I mean, I want to eat in restaurants, but I, I want to wear a white suit. I'll... I'll see what I can do for you. By the end of the week, you'll be a southern gentleman. That all sounds fantastic. So what's the restaurant scene like? It's an amazing restaurant scene. I've got five great restaurants lined up for you. First restaurant you're going to is called Alouette's, but it's soul food, but it's holistic soul food. Alouette's Cafe is in the heart of the historic Cannonboro Elliott Borough neighborhood just off Charleston's main drag, King Street. I'm starting your food journey here because they're all about soul food, which is huge in Charleston but owner Alouette Jones serves her own version of this classic Southern cuisine. She wants to start a soul food revolution. Soul food is definitely not healthy. But look at me, I'm 62 years old and I can touch my toes. I can outrun most people 40. So I'm excited about what it's doing for me. Alouette has been serving her healthy, holistic soul food since 1993. It makes me happy, good food. It keeps me energized. For Alouette, holistic soul food means fresh, local, in season, and pig free. I never trust an animal that does not sweat. I love the pig as a pet, but I don't love the pig enough to eat it. Oprah Winfrey and local resident Bill Murray are regulars, and Alouette's cafe has a very loyal fan base. But Alouette needs your review to get a lot more customers. Her big dream is to take holistic soul food across North America. A review from Giles would mean so much for this restaurant. Spreading the word would truly help increase my business. I want to see this restaurant move to New York City. I am by no means thrilled that my first southern soul food meal is going to be holistic. It sounds like something you'd get from a homeopath not in a restaurant. And on top of that, there's a sign that says good food takes time. And it's boiling hot in here. This could turn out to be a very slow, very sticky meal. I feel so uptight and English and hot. And in my suit, I'm getting a bit of a schwitz on. So how are you doing today? Very good indeed. Good, good. First time here at Alouette? First time here in Charleston, first time here in South Carolina. Well, good. Let me tell you a little bit about the restaurant. As you can see above the window right there, this is a no pork cafe. We also don't serve any soft drinks, but we have a selection of wine and a selection of beer. Well, that sounds like just my kind of restaurant. I have never, anywhere ever. in the world, <laughs> ever been told that they don't serve soft drinks, uh, they do serve wine and beer. We don't want to promote sugar, so that's why. So it's okay to get drunk as long as your teeth don't fall out. Let me tell you about the lima bean soup. And so I, it's a hot soup? Hot soup. If I drink soup, it tends to make me sweat no, a bit. No, this one. Look. If I sweat, can I have it free? You can have it free. <laughs> The other specials we have for the day is this, the Bill Murray's Black Bean Burger. 
It's made on a thin multi grain bun with Geechee Girl sauce that we make ourselves instead of putting mayonnaise on it. What is mayonnaise. a Geechee Girl? Geechee is the culture here in Charleston. Gullah is the language. Is that like Creole and Sort of like that? Creole in New Orleans, but it's, it's indigenous to the low country African Americans here. When I get angry, I, I speak it. So if I behave badly and you don't like, you're going to throw me out, you're going to do it in Gullah? I'll do it in Gullah. And should I get some greens? Yeah, the greens are really good. You never greens. had collard greens like this. And I want you to tell me what flavor comes out of when you taste it. Is it a test? It's a test. If I recognize it, can I have my meal free? You can have your meal free. And the other thing we have is Oprah Winfrey's fresh shrimp. So we season it real well. We put it on the grill for about 10 seconds. We deep fry it, and it comes back out looking like that picture over there. As a critic, I've never understood why a restaurant would want to put pictures of its food on the wall. Shrimp. This is definitely what my shrimp's going to look like. Definitely what your shrimp Again, if it doesn't, okay. can I have it free? You can have it free. It's not that I'm desperate for a free meal. I just love a challenge, and my waiter seems keen to play. That's in the top three nicest men I've ever had talk me through a menu. You know, I want to have everything that, that he wants to sell. Maybe he's just a good salesman. Maybe he's naturally such a lovely man. But even my waiter's charisma can't distract me from the very muggy elephant in the room. This sweat lodge of a restaurant is seriously beginning to test my patience. According to Alouettes, good food takes time, so I took the precaution of ordering everything at once, but I may have broken one of my own essential rules of dining. Never order a lot of food at a slow restaurant. You'll end up angry and hungry. Finally, my food arrives, but before I can dig in, I've got three bets to settle with my waiter. If I get any of them right, my meal is free. First, does my shrimp look like the photo on the wall? Remember now, if it's not looking exactly the same, you get it free. I, I think it looks exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Do you, you did that deliberately, didn't you? We, we, no, we do it that way every time. That's exactly the way you ask anybody that comes here. All right. Lima bean soup. You don't think this is going to make me sweat? It's quite warm. I didn't sweat, so it's not free. OK. And then don't forget about the um, greens. OK. There's going to be a flavor. Don't be a flavor. Is that coconut? Coconut. I told you. Got I it. can do it. Good man. Free dinner. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> coconut. No one gets one over on the Million Dollar Critic. What a great way to start a meal. Food tastes so much better when it's free. Well, the, the lima bean soup. It's fantastically light, has no beef in the stock. It normally beans just provide roughage. The effect is much, much lighter, much less fatty. Which is why that guy is 100 pounds thinner than most of the guys who you see serving food. Collard greens. The collard greens have no bacon in them, they have no lard, they have no fat. They don't have the rich umami depth. This is how vegetarians like their food. These two are both delicious. Now on to the celebrity portion of my lunch, my Bill Murray burger and Oprah Winfrey shrimp. I'm often very skeptical of restaurants that name the food after celebrities, because that's cheesy, that's naff, that's, I don't want to eat a piece of food just because Oprah wants to eat it. I prefer food that's just named after food. There's pepper here, I might put a bit on, but it's actually cayenne pepper on the table, not white pepper. Good slaw, very, very fine shredding. Now shrimp. Great, very, very sweet. Not bready. I always eat the tails. Oprah can rest easy. Her namesake shrimp dish is delicious. My food so far at Alouette's has been very good, but I've got one more dish to go. A veggie burger. I hate veggie burgers. They always taste like fried compost. The burger was invented to be made with chopped beef, not beans. Right, let's see if Bill Murray knows anything about food. I have a feeling this is where this meal gets far too holistic for my liking. This week, I'm drinking in the southern charm of Charleston, South Carolina, on the hunt for a restaurant worthy of my million dollar review. Today, I'm having lunch at the home of holistic soul food, Alouette's Cafe, tucked away in a hidden corner of the historic Canberra Elliottborough neighborhood. In general, I don't get too excited about health food, but so far I've had three great dishes. However, I feel my luck is about to run out with this veggie burger. Is this where this meal gets a bit too holistic for my liking? Just as I expected, this dish does not do it for me. 
I don't normally like veggie burgers. I usually find them bland. And this one, beautifully made, light, tasty, but not a thing I'd replace a good old fashioned cheeseburger with. When I order a burger, I want blood. If it comes to burger time, who are you going to call? Not Bill Murray. Spreading the word to other people about Alouette's Cafe would help me, and that's why I'm so excited about Giles being here, because he can definitely spread the word. I'm hoping that he loves the food. I got my fingers crossed. Well, I mean, that's one of those places where the food lived up to the loveliness of the place and the excellence of the service, and that was great. I don't care if it's holistic. That, my first real experience of soul food, is, was perfect. Uh, and if it, is, if it is healthier and if there is less grease, that's a good thing, because in weather like this, there's a limit to how much weight you want to be carrying around. It set the bar very high for Charleston. But before I eat again, I've got to get out of this hot woolen suit. My researcher, Julia, has set me up at a shop called Billy Reed. And to help me look and feel like a local, I'm being styled by Jessica Mishner, an editor from a magazine called Garden and Gun. Are you going to find something that's going to make me look like a southern gentleman? We are. Well, you look pretty perfect now, but we're going to get you all kitted out. I think you want something in a linen. Yes, that's the sort of fellow. <sighs> Ta-da. Great. Right. What do you think? If the people back home could see me. It's risque. And no socks. No socks. A casual, nonchalant. Oh, it's drafty. Oh. A southern gent loves a bit of color, so we'll just put it right through your buttonhole, or you just pull it out and give it to someone special. Wow, look at you. You look very dapper. They, they gave me a flower. They said I could give it to someone important. Wow, I'll take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. That's very nice. So you look like and act like a southern gentleman all of a sudden. It's amazing. Uh, well, it's very nice of you to say so. Um, Here, which, give me that. Which, oh, no, 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 no. I find myself a gentleman. I'll hold on to it. <laughs> um, but it does bring me to business. Um, yes. What's the next restaurant? It's called The Obstinate Daughter. It's just outside of Charleston on Sullivan's Island, which is a family-friendly beach community. Chef Jacques Larson has had lots of success in the past, but he's taking a big risk with his new place. What we're trying to do is offer downtown uh, caliber food out at the beach. Downtown caliber means adventurous dishes served on small tapas style plates. It's not an unusual concept for a big city restaurant, but it might not work for a beach crowd looking for low prices and hearty portions. The biggest gamble for us is kind of getting away from app, entree, dessert format. And I think for a lot of people, they almost feel threatened when coming in because they don't know how to order. Some of the things that we like most about it are some of the things that I think other people dislike most about it. Jacques needs your review to establish the obstinate daughter as the place to go on Sullivan's Island. Bottom line is, is that there's, there's a lot of employees here. I kind of owe it to them to give this my all and, and try to make it work. In every city, I like to eat with a local who really understands the culture and food scene of the place I'm visiting. Is this the best hair we could get? I think it is. Tonight, I'll be joining a real southern gentleman, Charleston Magazine food critic Jeff Allen. I'm eating with a critic from the Old South, so I'm stealing myself for the Brit bashing that inevitably comes with the territory. I'm trying to be polite and defer to you as a fellow rival critic. Normally, well, I would I... just push you aside and do the ordering. Boiled peanut, that's a thing I've read about. Have you had a boiled peanut yet? Yeah, is that, that a one. goober? Yeah, it is it's a goober. goober. I don't care if the boiled goober is the official snack food of South Carolina. I'm not excited to try one. The boiled peanut. All oh, right. They're in their shells. They are in their shells. It's a wet boiled peanut. So you just pop it open and then use the front teeth. If you still got your front teeth. <laughs> is yeah. it not salted then? They better be. Yeah. I know there are specialty down here, so that was me being polite but my first goober will almost certainly be my last. How are the boiled peanuts? Apparently, they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your frogmore chowder here. It has shrimp, sausage, potatoes, and corn. What is it saying to you in terms of authenticity? Well, I'm surprised, because I thought it would be red. And this is more of a white chowder. I think he's playing off of this thing called frogmore stew with the corn and the shrimp. I think what he's doing is he's tricking you. Fooled me a bit. He's made it into more of a traditional New England-style chowder. The I flavor... don't want a New England-style chowder. So basically, the whole menu is just a collection of lies. Mm -hmm. 
This week I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and tonight I'm just outside the city on sweet, serene Sullivan's Island. I'm dining with Charleston Magazine's food critic, Jeff Allen, at a brand new restaurant, The Obstinate Daughter. The chef claims he's taking a risk by bringing downtown caliber food to the beach, but so far I haven't tasted anything remotely sophisticated. It's a wet, boiled peanut. I'm feeling rather misled. I don't want a New England-style chowder. And I'm getting very frustrated. So basically, the whole menu is just a collection of lies. The obstinate daughter had better deliver on its promise of sophistication, or it won't have a hope in hell of receiving my review. Hey, you British are tough. I have your shrimp roll for you. I have your Glamour Dave's baked clam. Top a little breadcrumbs, garlic, and herbs. Big, fat, local, sweet shrimp. A mm. little bit of chili. That's delicious. Now, the clams. These are from Clammer Dave, who's basically got the whole of Charleston locked down with his clams. He's Rock like Boss Hog in the Dukes of Hazard, except with clams. That's more true than you know. I'd be interested to hear what you think about what Jacques has done with Clammer Dave's clams here. Because I haven't been overly impressed with Chef Jacques' food. I thought he was taking a big risk bringing downtown food to the beach. But so far, this all seems pretty beachy to me. It's got too much salt. It's much too salty, isn't it? A clam is such a delicate thing. Those clams, you know, they've got a nuclear half-life. Jacques maybe needs to just back off and respect the clam a little more. <laughs> it's edible. But to get my review, edible isn't enough. Our final dishes this evening are a grilled red snapper and pasta with a locally caught trigger fish. This course needs to be outstanding because the overly salty clams mean the obstinate daughter is slipping out of the running for my review. So farro, we get a lot of in London at the moment. I mean, it's an Italian thing, but it's a trendy grain. But you've never had it with boiled peanuts. Just what I wanted, more goobers. I would go so far as to say that was edible. <laughs> All right, let's try the trigger. The trigger's one of my favorite fish. It's not a restaurant pasta. This is the kind of pasta I do for my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see these kind of squirrels, there's no possibility he's made the pasta. He's just right. bought big bags of squirrely pasta. The predominant flavor is salt. And I like salt. You do? British. I didn't think British. I thought they eat potatoes and cod. You just sit, we eat gruel. We just live on <laughs> porridge. And we chew thistles just yeah, to keep yeah, us going. Yeah, yeah. And warm beer. We have very tasty food. It's very sophisticated. That's Thank not you very what much. the French say. You're now going to insult my national cuisine. <laughs> Just as I thought we were bonding like brothers in arms, one last dig at the Brit. We should do a British restaurant and tell, we don't have a British restaurant. You should get one. Okay. I'm going to come and open one, and I'm going to be mean to everybody who comes. <laughs> For sure. Well, look at that in the dining room tonight. Giles did seem to enjoy himself, I, I think, for the most part. I hope we pulled it off. Well, I've had a terrific evening. I enjoyed the company. I liked the place. You couldn't ask for more in terms of atmosphere. And the guy can cook. But tonight, he really overdid it on the salt, and I think that might be a problem. The next day, I'm ready to eat at the third out of five restaurants vying for my million-dollar review. And for some reason, Julia wants to meet at a place called the Charleston Library Society to tell me about it. Hey, Julia, what's up? Sorry. We're in the library. I'm just doing some research. The next restaurant you're going to serves authentic Charleston cuisine. I just found a recipe for squirrel in here. Squirrel? Yeah. That's what Elvis used to eat. Julia's research has inspired me. If my third restaurant in Charleston is claiming to serve genuinely authentic local cuisine, I want to put them to a little test. So what's the name of this restaurant? It's called Pugin's Porch. Pugin's Porch? That sounds like a soap opera set in the Deep South. You're judging the food. Not the name. Pugin's Porch is in the heart of Charleston's aptly named historic district, home to over 4,800 landmark structures, all within walking distance of each other. Pugin was the family dog who used to hang out on, you guessed it, the porch. Pugin's Porch is the oldest restaurant in Charleston, South Carolina. My family took it over in 1978. Brad Ball is the restaurant's third generation owner, and together with his managing partner, Chef Daniel Doyle, he wants to steer Pugin's Porch away from its reputation as a tourist joint. Tourist is always a painful word. This restaurant needed a revamp. It definitely had kind of been stuck in the 90s a little bit in my mind. 
Brad is trying hard to turn Pugin's Porch into a great modern restaurant. He's remodeled the space and overhauled the menu to reflect the traditional food of Charleston, which is known locally as low country cuisine. I would really like to take Pugin's Porch back to kind of what the roots are essentially, but in a contemporary style. Pugin's Porch embodies southern cuisine, simply put. Brad's gambling that you'll love his modern version of Pugin's Porch. He wants your review to let people know that while its new menu is as crowd-pleasing as ever, it's not just for tourists anymore. Have a wonderful dinner, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. This place looks a little bit themey. There are a lot of people with cameras taking pictures of each other eating. A lot of them are wearing shorts. You know, I've gone to the effort of investing in a linen suit and trying to be a southern gentleman, and there's people in there who I can see their toenails and their, their knobbly knees. I've heard people in Charles. Oh, hi. Good evening, sir. How hi. are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well. My name's Jimmy. I'll be taking care of you this evening. I'm Rob. happy to start you off with one of our drinks from the cocktail menu here. There's no mint juleps on there, so have you got something? No mint julep, but our southern creation is what we call a mystic. That's uh -huh. going to be done with a deep eddy grapefruit vodka, a little fresh cucumber and fresh lime juice, and a little bit of St. Germain. Good. That sounds good. Excellent. That sounds southern. Oh, yes, sir. As southern can be. He seems like a nice fellow. But then they all seem like nice fellows down here. Many doesn't look bad. A lot of them are traditional European-style entrees. Then in amongst it, there's fried alligator salad, shrimp and grits, a bit of low country cooking too. If Pugan's Porch really does pride itself on its authentic southern cuisine, it isn't immediately clear from this menu. I've come here for a true taste of the low country, and fortunately, I've come with some insurance. I have a slightly weird request. I'd quite like to have a quick word with the chef. Oh, um... You know, I doubt that Chef Dan would have a problem with that. I'm sure we'd be happy to accommodate you, sir, if really? you'd like to follow me. I do like the South. You're so polite. You're so accommodating. <laughs> but waiters are always polite and accommodating. Chefs are a much more unpredictable breed. So it's not without trepidation that I enter Chef Dan's kitchen. I've been down to the, the local library. Sorry. I found what I thought seemed to me a recipe that it wasn't be too much to ask you to do. Some molasses fritters. Well, let's, let's just order the food here. How about that? That's not the answer I was looking for. I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, in the historic district, eating at Pugan's Porch, a tourist restaurant trying to offer a modern version of Charleston's traditional low country cuisine. To test their authenticity, I dug up a low country food recipe from 1847 barged into their kitchen and demanded their chef cook it for me. I found what I thought seemed to me a recipe that it wasn't be too much to ask you to do. Let's just order the food here. How about that? Can we do that? Sorry, I'm a pushy bastard, and I'm just not giving up. Some molasses fritters. It's an 1847 recipe. Does that sound like a thing that you could do? Go on, just try saying no to me. I don't know if I have molasses. I have some maple syrup that probably work there. That would be great. I think we can handle that. Yeah. We'll give it a try. And before I leave, one more pushy bastard move. I order my meal directly from the chef. I'll go for the snapper and the pork. OK. The alligator, the shrimp and grits, and then the molasses fritters. Yeah. All right. As they say in Charleston, the squeaky Brit gets the fritters. Nice to meet you for real. Well, that was uh, unexpectedly successful. He's a big, big guy with a beard, a good old boy. He's probably got a gun under there. OK, here we are, sir. I have your shrimp and grits here, your fried alligator salad here. Oh, wow. The alligator, it's amazing. It's like flavored like lobster, but in consistency like chicken breast. I would go so far as to say it's better than crocodile. Now, shrimp and grits. That's the kind of signature dish of Charleston. It doesn't taste sophisticated. He hasn't gussied it up particularly. I, I would call this a tourist dish, but it, it's not untasted. And, sir, we have for you here the molasses fritters. <laughs> cool. And then we have our crispy skin snapper. I haven't actually had pulled pork since I got to the south. Suddenly, underneath a piece of very good grilled fish, I've got my first pulled pork. Which is a very strange thing to have with fish. I don't know if they belong on the same plate. Well, I think they do. If I'd just been brought the piece of fried fish, I'd be bored out of my mind. So this is like four or five meals in one. Could be an absolute train wreck. It's actually quite marvelous.
And so we come to the moment of truth. The test that I set the chef, the recipe that I pulled from the book from 1847. What's it going to taste like? Has it survived nearly two centuries languishing in a library in Charleston, only to be resurrected by me? Mm. It's pretty amazing. It's just a taste of 1847. If they're trying to get back to basics with the old principles of Southern cooking, that is the way to do it. This is good, but this remains complicated. This that I dug out of an old recipe book had four ingredients, and it's absolutely mind-blowing because it's so, so simple. I think he could go even further in this direction if he wants to make this as authentic as he says he does. I think we performed excellently this evening, and I'm very proud of uh, where we stand with everything. Hoogan's Port. It's a ridiculous name for a restaurant. In many ways, it is a bit ridiculous. It's a beautiful historic building, and it's going to be full of tourists. But just because it's a tourist destination doesn't mean that it isn't a good restaurant. But is it good enough for a million-dollar review? Three restaurants down, two more to go. So far, I've had soul food and some of Charleston's traditional low country cuisine. It's a wet, boiled peanut. I don't know what my researcher Julia's got lined up next, but I'm really hoping it's a barbecue restaurant. I can't transform into a true southern gentleman without eating some barbecue. Why are we meeting at the windiest point of town? Because I wanted a swing on a swing. Ugh. You can't come to Charleston and not swing on a swing. It's like you can't come to Charleston and not have barbecue. Tell me I'm going to a barbecue restaurant tonight. I hate to disappoint you, Giles, but barbecue's not that big in Charleston. Well, there's my illusions blown away. Where are we going tonight? The lot. The lot? Sounds like it's in a parking lot. Not exactly. But you do need a car to get there because it's in the James Island neighborhood, a 10-minute drive from downtown. Owner Vanessa Harris has been convincing customers to make the trip ever since she hired executive chef Alex Lira away from New York's famous craft restaurant. I needed someone to kind of take the reins, and he kind of had me as soon as I tried the food. The menu is all him. It's all farm to table, locally sourced, fresh ingredients. But no matter how fresh the food is, the lot faces another major challenge. It's located next door to a live rock venue. Customers all get the same warning. It might get loud. We are definitely unique. People going out to dinner don't expect to hear sound checks, so it's a lot of like, whoa, what's going on here? Vanessa needs your million dollar review to convince people to ignore the lot's noisy surroundings and focus instead on their exceptional food. A review from Giles would put us on the map. This business means everything to me. Uh, it is the future for my children. It is um, my future. It is my sanity. You know, it allows me to live the life that I want to live. It not succeeding would really be hurtful. A 10-minute drive is just long enough out of the city that I'm not expecting to see many tourists here. And as the lot is attached to a music venue, I'm expecting either hipsters or bikers. But walking in, I see tables full of clean-cut, prosperous suburbanites, almost a country club crowd. The decor, on the other hand, is like an acid trip. I've never been more confused in my life. Possibly the ugliest restaurant I've ever been in. I don't know who told them about blue and yellow going together well. I mean, this looks like I've been painted by a three-year-old. And all the pictures are hung wonky. I genuinely have trouble digesting my food when the pictures are wonky like that. It makes everything go a bit inside me. But I guess the looks aren't everything. That's a loud noise. Um, that's music. Is this? Yeah. I can't even that going on. We're connected to a music venue. So if you open the doors, you're looking at a stage. They're doing sound check right now. I should order some food, eat and get out of here then, shouldn't I? Would be the yeah. thing. Or you could drink more and stay and enjoy the show. Let's start with option A and, and build our way up to option okay. B. Tell me about the food. Sasha, obviously mm -hmm. the favorite thing on the menu this evening. Seafood like that is best cooked from life. And you have to cut off their faces. You have to cut off their faces. Yeah. You know, that is a food preparation I've never seen in a cookbook. First, cut off its face. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the trick. I would love more than anything to see that. OK, well, let me check with Chef, and I'll be right back. I've, I've never seen anything's face cut off. I um, don't really know why I want to. The cold-blooded restaurant critic in me is curious to learn about this method of food preparation. The compassionate human being in me is absolutely horrified. Oh, God, he is soft, isn't he? I've never held one. He feels kind of like handling a toad or something, doesn't it? Yeah. He's a very soft fellow. 
What are you about to do and why? I'm gonna cut the face off it because that doesn't taste very good. And then we're gonna cut the gills out. And then we're gonna cut the apron off. The apron must be a euphemism for something. That is the private area. Sometimes it's better not to know how your food is prepared, especially when it has a face. Wow. Gosh, I can see why you have a door on the kitchen. That's about the most terrible thing I've ever seen. And now, obviously, what I feel like is the vegetarian option. But instead, I order a pig's trosser cake. And, seeing as I asked to see its face removed from its body, I have to order the crab. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Lots of restaurants trade on their lively atmosphere. But if this din continues, the lot's chances of winning my review will be as dead as my defaced crab. There's two double doors there, and on the other side of it, there's some man who thinks he's Jimi Hendrix. I cannot eat. I cannot eat with, with this going on. What I want to know is why they built a restaurant here. This week, I'm in a southern sweetheart of a city, Charleston, South Carolina. Tonight, I'm eating at The Lot, the fourth of five restaurants vying for my million-dollar review. So far, I've experienced stomach-turning decor and appetite-killing noise levels, thanks to the live rock band next door. What I want to know is why they built a restaurant here. But I'm willing to forget all of that unpleasantness if the food is delicious. For you, sir, this is the trotter cake. Classic poor man's food, the foot of the pig. It looks like kind of mountain food prettied up, gussied up for a restaurant. Egg is nice and runny. Nothing more heartbreaking than ordering something with an egg on and they've cooked it through. The whole point is it needs to run down over the, the rendered pig foot. Very, 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 very rich. Very fatty. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to cook the foot, the hoof of the pig for so long that it all melts. It's how they used to make glue. But, but here they're making a kind of a, a hockey puck. Of, of, of gluey pig's toes and then frying it off. It's not sophisticated, but it's very tasty. This is your soft shell crab. Brilliant. Enjoy. Thanks so much. She's brought me something that looks like a seagull dropped its lunch on its way home. If I hadn't seen the chef kill this thing by cutting its face off, I think he ran it over on the way to work. That's a whole lot of smashed dead brown stuff, if you ask me. I almost want them to bring out its face and I'll eat that instead. So there's brains in here, there's an intestinal tract, and then you eat the whole of it. So that sometimes its liver goes pop, splash, and just when you're enjoying it, there's this explosion of bitterness because the gallbladder has just gone ping in the back of your mouth. All that being said, it tastes pretty good. It's a really fantastic plate of food. I, I, I haven't come all this way just to eat the same, the same old stuff I get at home. In the end, I've had a fantastic meal. It wasn't fancy cooking, it was real cooking, and it was really well done. But before I go, there's one thing I have to do. Can you just do that one? Can you just straighten it a tiny bit? Yeah, that, I think that's okay. Are you OCD? Not normally. I just kind of, I just need to just do that one there. Oh, there's too much. Is that about right? Yeah. Good. I'm sorry to interrupt your meal. Seems like Giles had a good time. We would love to get the review. I think it would be great for us. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> After four very different meals in Charleston, it's time for the fifth and final restaurant up for my million dollar review. Hey, Julia. Hey, Giles. Tonight, what's the restaurant? It's a place called Lily's Hot Kitchen. It's a Chinese restaurant. Is that just like straight Chinese or is it southern Chinese? You're the food critic. You're going to have to tell me. Well, listen, Chinese is my thing. I am the world's leading expert in Chinese food, and I love it, and I miss it. So what's interesting about the Lee Lee's Kitchen? Well, it's on a side street in Charleston's west side, a neighborhood that's a bit rough around the edges. How rough? Let's just say the doorman isn't just there to open the door. Lee Lee's Hot Kitchen is owned by chef Lily Lee and her partner Caroline Nielsen Faller. They've worked together in restaurants on and off for over 20 years. With my knowledge about Chinese food and her knowledge about restaurant business, it's a good marriage for us. Lily and Caroline know you have incredibly high standards when it comes to Chinese cuisine. And there's a chance you might not love their food. But they're willing to take the risk because if Lily's Hot Kitchen is going to last, it needs the exposure that comes with your million-dollar review. 
A review from Giles, it's more than huge. We don't have great PR company. We never had any of that. This is a small restaurant, but in terms of the importance of how successful it will be, it's huge. In the light of day, this neighborhood doesn't seem so bad. But then, why is there a massive great big bouncer standing outside? You're expecting restaurant critics, tough people like me. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. If I could eat Chinese food all day, every day, I probably would. So if Lili's Hot Kitchen is going to get my million dollar review, it's going to have to exceed my already sky high expectations. At first glance, Lili's looks great. It's rammed to the gills and wonderfully decorated. But there are no Chinese people in here, which would explain why the menu is written entirely in English. Usually, I want to see some Chinese writing on a menu. For me, these are both early warning signs. So with my kind of boring restaurant critique search for authenticity, I suppose I find myself skeptical. Can they really cook Chinese food? And to find out, I go straight to the person in charge of the food, Lily herself. I'd be interested to know from her how much it really is like the food that she cooks, or whether that's just something she's saying, because it's what we want to hear. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Thank you for coming out. And you're from Taiwan, yeah? From Taiwan. Yeah. I was born in Taiwan. My father was from yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. My mother was from Beijing. Our cuisine is really based on my family history. Hong Shao Rou. That was my father's favorite dish. It's a red braised pork. And that's from Shanghai. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, that you have to have it. Yeah. 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 Satisfied that I'm in good hands, I decide to leave my order to Lily. I do request her father's favorite dish, the red braised pork belly, but everything else is up to her. After a good spicy soup, Lily sends me her traditional scallion pancakes. She's serving them together with salt and pepper soft shell crab. The crab better be good because I've just had an excellent version of it at the lot. So a scallion pancakes. Chewy. The Chinese love a bland food as much as they love spicy food. So this is one of those things which is really quite bland. And they'll almost celebrate its blandness. It's great, and it's not what I expected. I, I walked in here a little bit cynical. Chef Lily is already off to a great start with these scallion pancakes. And if the soft shell crab is just as good, she's well on her way to earning my review. So I've got a whole soft shell crab here. Quite a difficult thing to eat with chopsticks. Uh, hard to know where to go. I'll, uh, I'll just pull off a leg. It's not as crispy as I'd have expected. I think you would call this chew yin soft shell crab, which normally has more chili and more garlic. He's probably toning it down for the for local taste. This is a bit bland, you know, just sort of chopped vegetables, fried up, broccoli. I'm officially annoyed by this crab dish. I can tell she's under seasoned it to suit wimpy local tastes. So now it comes down to my final dish, her father's favorite braised pork. If she tones that down, it'll not only be sad, she'll lose her shot at my million dollar review. This week, I'm eating in the beautifully historic and ever so southern Charleston, South Carolina. Tonight, I'm dining at the fifth and final restaurant vying for my million dollar review. Lili's Hot Kitchen, one of Charleston's few Chinese restaurants, served me excellent scallion pancakes but a bland soft-shell crab. If Chef Lily's father's favorite dish doesn't amaze me, Lily's will be out of the running for my review. Okay, I have the Hong Shou Ro here. It's a pork belly dish that is slow cooked in a Chinese five spice. Thank you very much. I can see why this was her dad's favorite dish. It's slow cooking, lots of spices, not the kind of thing you get traditionally in Chinese restaurants in, in North America or Europe. Just like home cooking, the kind of thing that I'm always looking for. Terrific. Lily's hot kitchen is impressive, and Lily has done her dad and her ancestors proud. But I feel like she's playing it safe. So before I leave, I've got a challenge for her. Is there anything that you cook for yourself at home? That's, that's kind of so Chinese, you think... Nobody you know, will eat it? Yeah. That wait, sounds great. Wait, yeah, yeah. Okay. It might not be what you have expected, but you'll see. What have I landed myself in there? Uh, what is she going to bring? What is the thing that she just whips up when she gets home? Is it a pig's intestine stuffed inside another pig's intestine? Is it a boiled squirrel? It could be anything. OK, Giles. 
but... Oh, my heavens, what is that? Is that brains? <laughs> no, it's just smashed tofu with a bit of a green onion and cilantro and peanuts. Are these boiled peanuts? Uh, no, we fried them. Oh, fried, good. Fried them, yes. I'm not a big but fan of boiled peanuts. We eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I will be honest, it doesn't look that appetizing to an English. It doesn't, that's why I don't serve it. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like cold lamb's brains. Uh, I almost wish it was. It's pretty terrible. It looks and tastes like something that my body rejected and has been put in front of me as a punishment by my parents. It has a very faint aftertaste of garbage. It's a sort of on your breath afterwards. It's as if I'd kind of woken up really hungry and eaten from a bin. The review comes good, and uh, and hopefully people will frequent this restaurant, so we will always be busy. Well, that was a way better meal than I thought it was going to be. I, it's a lovely place. She's a lovely woman. When I first looked at the menu, I thought it wasn't all that authentic. But the pork belly, the, her dad's favorite dish, that was beautifully done. At the very end, she's given me a fortune cookie. It might tell me if there's a million dollar review in their future. Mm. It's my final day in Charleston. After eating at five restaurants competing for my million dollar review, I'm ready to weigh my options and choose the winner. So Julia is taking me to Rutledge's Cab Company for breakfast. I already know which restaurant is not getting my review. This guy's too much salt. Unfortunately, the obstinate daughter over-seasoned its way out of the running for my review, which means I have four contenders. Alouette's Cafe, Pugan's Porch, Lily's Hot Kitchen, and the lot, but only one can win my review. Tell me about the lot. So noisy. But that said, the food was very, very good. There's no question that they had absolutely the right ideas. It looked like a kind of old roadside shack, but clearly they had modern values. Hey, I want to hear what you thought about Alouettes. My heart sank slightly when the guy showed up and said it's holistic soul food. You don't have to find any meat in there. But everything was done very well. It's food that's based on nutrition rather than just fat. What did you think about Lili's? Lili's was a bit of an enigma. When I first went in, I was a bit suspicious because I didn't see any Chinese people, apart from Lily. But then I had that amazing pork dish that her father loved, and that showed me she can really serve authentic and delicious Chinese food. OK, what about Pugin's Porch? Is it a tourist restaurant or is it not a tourist restaurant? That sounds southern. Oh, yes, sir, as southern can be. And I certainly won't allow the fact that it's basically a tourist attraction to get in the way of its chances of getting a million-dollar review. It's time to write my review. There can only be one winner, and my review could boost their business by a million dollars in extra revenue. I don't take this task lightly, and in my heart, I need to be certain I'm making the right call. Who will it be? My review is written, and today it goes live in the Huffington Post. Whose life will it change? Will it be Alouette's Cafe? Or what about The Lot? Lily's Hot Kitchen? Or Pugan's Porch? Hey, we won! <gasps> I chose Alouettes because I absolutely fell in love with them and their concept of holistic soul food. It confirmed that I do the best that I can do. Giles loved it, and I'm happy, because I won. When I think of holistic food, I think of something that's hippie-ish and worthy and boring. And while Alouettes was certainly healthy, it definitely wasn't boring. Alouettes Cafe has a great energy, great food, and excellent service. It's doing something really unique and it well deserves my million dollar review.